My name is Anders Jensen. Let's learn some UI path. Today we will see how we can do API calls and update Excel. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get all the new videos about UI path and RPA. So let's get started. We have uh, an API site here which provides uh, information about Star Wars. And um, we can see here that if we query this uh, API, we fill uh, Swapy Co API films uh, forward slash one, then we'll get information about the first Star Wars movie. It's called A New Hope. The director is George Lucas, and there's a release date in 1977, and with a whole lot of other information. We want to uh, do uh, lots of uh, API calls. For example, if we take the second movie, we can just change the endpoint up here to have information about The Empire Strikes Back, which is the second movie. What we want to do here is that we want to update our Excel sheet. So we got the seven uh, first movies and we want to update it with title, release date and director. Of course, we could make our UiPath robot works in the UI, like clicking and get text and all that. It will both be slow and it will not be very robust to errors. So what we'll do instead is that we'll make API calls from UiPath. So let's go to UiPath and see how that works. First, we need to manage packages. So go up to manage packages and click that. And what we'll do here is that we'll click all packages and then we'll search for web activities or web dot activities here. Choose this one by UiPath, a JSON, REST, SOAP, XML and click install. Then click save and I accept. And now we install the package. So now we can try to call uh, the Star Wars API and of course we could call all other APIs as well. So go to activities, then find a HTTP request, drag this in. And I strongly encourage you to do all these operations yourself because you'll learn a lot from that. So the endpoint, that was just the uh, address of this API call. Let's just take the second movie. So copy that over to UiPath here and paste it in here in the endpoint. So we click OK. And now we can see here that we, we call an endpoint. So we're not getting something out. So we'll need to go out here in the output, the result, and then we'll create a, a JSON string with the output. So control K and we'll call that str films. And this string will look exactly like this string. You see here this JSON string with the curly brackets and then the information here. So uh, then we need to, so now we requested it, the information, then we need to deserialize it into an object so we can work with it. So uh, let's find a deserialize JSON here and the input that was just the str films. So uh, that's here, the JSON string str films. And then we will uh, create an output, which will, which will be of the type JSON object. So uh, control K, we could call this JSON object films. And then we can work with it. So uh, let's just try to make a right line. And again, just pause the video if it goes too fast and rewind a bit. And um, eventually you'll get it. It's very easy this when you just get your hold of it. So uh, don't... Um, don't feel bad if you don't get it the first time. Um, usually it will sit there the second or third time. So now we can uh, get the information out of this JSON object here. So what we'll do here is that we'll refer to the object and then we'll choose the select token. And what this select token does is that we can now, we can apply C sharp link to our JSON object here. And that will make it easier to query because now we can make an entire query uh, in one string. I'll show you that in a second. But here we'll just uh, get the director like this to string. So now we will just get the director of the second um, Star Wars movie. We will run it. it Runs. And we can go down here to output and we can see that that is Irvin Kirschner. We can go back here and we can see here that the director is indeed Irvin Kirschner. So far, so good. And what this select token does, let me get back to that, is that we won't see it here, but if the director had a um, a, a substring like this, HTTP, say that there was a, 
a sub here that called maybe the sex of the director, then we could just uh, refer to it by just having a dot sex or maybe age of the director or whatever. However, we will just use the director here. So now we can uh, apply, of course, and we can just change this to title, then we will get the title out of it. We can try to run it. Like this, and go down here in output, and we can see that uh, the title of the second one is The Empire Strikes Back. So um, let's uh, see how we can now, we can take the Excel sheet. Here I got an Excel sheet with ID, title, release date, and director. And I want to update this Excel sheet. So this is the first movie, the second movie. The idea corresponds to the what uh, number in the sequence the movie is. And of course, it's a unique idea. So we want to look up the first movie, then we want to get the title, release date, and director, and so forth down the rows. So let's see how that is done. We will close down our Excel sheet. And then in the beginning, we will choose a read range. So we can read our Excel sheet to have the information from there. So drag in a read range and choose that one from workbook here. We will click the three dots and then we will find the place where we placed our Excel sheet. I placed mine on a desktop, so Star Wars called mine. And let's delete this range here. So we just take the entire one. Now we have to choose an output, so Control K. We can call it DTSV. So instead of so now we got uh, it all in a data table which corresponds to the Excel sheet. So instead of um, like doing this uh, all the time, we can just make a for each row for this data table and just do it uh, one time. So find a for each row. Drag this guy in here. Let me delete this body. And then we can say for each row in this data table up here. Then we want to do something. So we'll um, first we will uh, have to create another data table because we will add a data row. So each time this uh, this job is done for each of the movies, the title, director, and the release date, then we want to update. And we cannot update in the same data table as we uh, iterate through in this for each row. So we will just uh, copy this read range, paste it in underneath, and then in the output we can delete this. Control K, call this DTS3 output. So now we got an output data table. Right, I hope you get this. Then uh, what we need here is that in the for each row we will create an index so we can keep track of which row we are in. We'll use that in a second. So Control K, int index, we can just call it. This one will just tell us which row we are in in this iteration, right? So far, so good. Then we can uh, start to do the operations because this will be done like for each row, so seven times. And um, we can start with uh, this um, HTTP request. So let me drag that in. And what we'll need to change here is that the result will still come out in the STR films. However, we will change the endpoint. So here it's rather static. It was just the second movie and we want to uh, have, so whatever row we're in, we want to refer to the idea of uh, the Excel sheet. Remember, let me, uh, let me show you that. So we are in a line of what we're actually doing. And um, here, so we are iterating through each of the, these rows and we want to know exactly where we are. So this is row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let me go back to UiPath and we'll go to this endpoint. So what we'll do here is that we'll delete this here and then we will have a quotation mark and then we will add uh, some kind of a variable and this one will be the idea so instead of making it two we just want to know where we are so this one will be the row item and then the column name that's the idea right and then to string so now instead of this static endpoint we made a dynamic endpoint which referred to our id so far so good the dclize json that will still be the same it will just take um, this JSON string and make it into an object. So that one we won't touch, right? And then we can uh, take this uh, right line because we won't use uh, that one. And um, 
we will just uh, we will let it be for there, but we will not move it in. So let's uh, drag in a multiple assign because now we will uh, take this information that we will uh, get here or we assign and save it into our second date table. So let's drag in a multiple assign here. And what we'll do here is that we'll uh, assign values to our new data table. So let me open the expression editor. So we will refer to our new uh, data table, that's the DT Star Wars output, right? And then the rows, uh, that's the, we want to refer to what uh, row we're in. And we just created this index up here. So that is just the int index. And then the column name, this one, the first one will be the title. So uh, we can uh, say item, sorry, item, and then title. So we're assigning a value to this exact cell, the row index, that's just where we are, and the title. So that this refers to an exact cell each time it loops through. Click OK. And then our value, that will just be the, the one from down here. So uh, let me copy this. And we can just paste it in up here. So now we assigned uh, all the titles to it, and we can just do the same for director and release date. So uh, let's maybe we can just copy this like this, and we can add a new one. And instead of uh, so that's just a title that we want to change, and we can change this to release date like this. And over here we need to change it to however we need to be a little bit of where, but copy this up here, click the three dots, and paste it in. So the release date, let's go back to our JSON here. We can see that the release date is built a little bit different than in our Excel sheet. So we just copy it from here. And let me paste this guy in. So now we choose the release date to write like this. And we'll do the exact same thing for the director. So add, let me copy this, paste it in. And instead of release date, we'll write director. Like this, and over here we will of course do the same thing, and I think it's just director with small letters. We'll check that. Like this, and we can see that in a second. Director, yes, with small letters. So now each time we do, for each of the rows, we assign new values to this uh, data table. And what we'll just need to do now is just that we need to we can delete this right line now. We just need to write it out to our Excel again. So what we will do here is that we will um, take whatever, whatever in this D DTS, uh, DT Star Wars output and write it into our initial uh, Excel sheet. So let's find a right range. Take the workbook here. Let me just get a little bit down. Like this. The workbook path, that's just the path of our Excel sheet. Let me close it down. Um, here, that's the Star Wars, like this. It's we write to the same sheet, and we'll just do the entire range like this. The data table. That's remember to take the, the output data table like this, and then we want to add headers. Now we can run the entire workflow. You can see it's really simple if you just get your hold of it, up, and let's verify that it indeed works. So we'll run it, and in a second we will have our Excel sheet updated. By the way, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. That will really help me a lot. So now we should have updated our Star Wars Excel worksheet. Let me open it. And we can verify that it's indeed true. Here we got uh, the titles, the release dates, and the directors. That's easy, right? It's better than having our robot work in the UI. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel to get all the new videos about UiPath and API. Have a good day. Bye-bye.